What's going on world? Eric Lawton here from Battlebred Canines, the channel dedicated to the working dogs we all know and love. Today I want to finally cover the Cane Corso. Now before we dive in, as always, don't forget to stomp on that like button. And if this is your first time here, consider subscribing so you don't miss any of this awesome, free, amazing content. Okay, maybe I'm gassing myself up a little bit, but what whatevs. Also feel free to visit BattlebreadK9s.com for updates and free downloadable content. Now most of the experts agree that the foundation of the Cane Corso came from Italy but cannot confirm exactly when the breed was established. We can confidently say that they are descended from the war dogs of Rome. After the fall of the Roman Empire, the Cane Corso worked as a farmhand, a guardian of the flock, property, and family, and a hunting dog, particularly of big and dangerous game like wild boar. The population of the breed declined and almost died out after the two world wars. By the 1970s, there were only a few left in the remote areas of southern Italy. The breed then caught the attention of Dr. Paolo Breber in 1973. The next year, Dr. Breber began a breeding program. The breed started off with a large gene pool as efforts were made to restore the breed. Other breeds and even crossbreeds were later used to increase the gene pool even further. This actually helped to enhance the health of the breed. In 1993, the International Cane Corso Federation was formed in the US, and then in 1996, the breed was recognized by the FCI. The ICCF started seeking recognition for the breed in the American Kennel Club in 2003 and changed its name to the Cane Corso Association of America. It wasn't until 2010 that the breed actually gained AKC recognition. Now, the average size for a male Cane Corso is between 24 and 27 inches tall, weighing about 99 to 110 pounds, with some reaching even 120 pounds. Females stand at 23 to 25 inches and weigh between 88 and 99 pounds. The Cane Corso is a large, powerful dog with a very large head and a heavy body that is rectangular in shape. While his build is strong, he has an elegant appearance with long and powerful muscles. The muzzle of the Cane Corso is very deep and broad and his neck is muscular and slightly arced. The breed comes in multiple colors and the hair of the Cane Corso is short and becomes thicker during the winter months. The ears of the dog may be cropped or uncropped. I prefer cropped myself just makes the dog look better in my opinion. Well-bred specimens of this breed are generally healthy, but you do want to keep an eye out for bloat and bone health as well as hip and joint issues. As a breed, the Cane Corso is intelligent, loyal, assertive, and confident. They have a stable temperament and are easy to train, but it is recommended that training and socialization start at an early age. Cane Corsos have a natural tendency to take charge, so its owner must establish that he or she is the pack leader and take control at a very early age. Boundaries must be set with confidence as the dog will most likely test them. The Cane Corso is good with children and can do well with other dogs when supervised. Exercise is extremely important for the breed to keep them physically fit and mentally stable. They can enjoy jogging with their owner or taking long hikes. Dogs of this breed are great protectors and while generally calm and friendly with their owners, they often act suspiciously and aggressively with strangers. I hope to own one of these amazing dogs in the future. We might actually have a breeding program starting out of Battlebred North ran by my cousin in New York, so I'll keep you posted on that. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to stomp on that like button and subscribe for more free content. I will see you guys next time. I love you all. God bless.